All right, there it is. I'm counting that as my completed 104 inch 235 to one audio transparent uh, flip up retractable projection screen. Completely DIY, I didn't follow anyone's instructions or tutorials, I just sort of sat down with pen and paper and sketched it out, put it together. Um, the frame is built out of Misumi aluminum extrusion, cost about 270 for all the lengths and the brackets and the nuts. And the hardware I got from McMaster car and that cost 10 bucks for the uh, blued high visibility 25 millimeter 8 M8 hardware. Uh, many revisions of the lift system here wanted to play. I try to do it simply with uh, lift supports, pneumatic lift supports. Uh, the ones I got from Amazon, which are, are on there still here, are only about 60 pounds lift a piece. They weren't enough to get it up. Then I bought a set of 180s from a lift support depot, and they got it up to the ceiling. And it, if I brought it down, it tried to break things. So those are way too strong. And then I got some 120s that did a, a better job, but the actual effort it would have taken to put it up to the ceiling and down to the bottom were too crazy. So I then invested in linear actuators, which claim a 600 pound static hold and couldn't deliver, which is why there are pneumatic lift supports and linear actuators on this same system. Uh, the entire screen, minus the weight of the linear actuators themselves, probably weighs somewhere in the 65 pound uh, range with the material. The material that is on it is uh, spandex, um, mill, matte, mill skin. And uh, even though everyone seems to go with uh, matte white over silver, I had a big section of, I bought a full piece of white and just didn't like it. And ended up going with their ivory mill skin matte over black. And you're gonna see what that looks like in a bit. The actuators are run with a wire to the controller, which is here. Actually, it's in the arm of my rack. There's a switch here that is a momentary up and toggle down because when I toggle down, the screen will just come down. And the linear actuators will hit their internal stops, so I don't have to flip that switch off if I don't want to. I will, but uh, it's about a 40 second operation, up and down. Obviously the uh, geometry causes it to get much slower at this bottom bit. It sort of sounds like the Titanic sinking. And there, they've stopped. So now I'll put this switch back to a resting position. Uh, the way I mounted this, since I used the Mitsumi extrusion, I was able to get this stuff. This uh, 7 16th uh, OD, 5 16 ID vinyl hose, heated up in a boiling water, and then with uh, the end sealed, and then just squeeze it into the track itself. The actual groove that the aluminum extrusion has. And that's on all four sides, and then on the back, it was done again to cover the excess before I cut it. So it's a solid all around. Let's just check it all good. I use the felt tape here, which is a two inch felt tape, just to block because I'm using an Epson 8350 and it is a 16 by nine projector and having a two, three, five to one screen means you're gonna have some overshoot and I'm actually aligned to the bottom. My projection actually ends here. Well, let's turn the projector on while we're at it. And shoots up to here. So in Media Player Classic, I have to, every time I load a video, tell it if it's a 16 by nine item, I make it smaller and then down. And if it's just two, three, five to one, I just have to shift it down like 11 notches and then it fills the screen perfectly. Let me get the lights off. It actually works really well uh, even during the day because of that black 
that black rear, you could just barely make out uh, any of the sunlight passing through. Why does that look like that? What is it doing? Why is it doing that? This might be the part where I edit things. Now I have my television behind the screen. Should be, what's it calling? Oh, yep, yeah, it separated them. Huh. Duplicates desktop two and three. Will that work? Will that work? I think it's going to work. I think that worked. Do we have lava on both? We do have lava on both. So now my TV and projector are both getting the same signal. So this is monitor one, monitor three is the TV, and monitor two is the projector. And they're both uh, mirroring each other. That one is just being weird because it feels like it. Let me go see the PAR is what I need to do. You set a scale image to full panel size. No, let's try that. Because something is cutting off the actual projector from using its full potential. I didn't zoom it out. It would be weird if it was. Yeah, it's throwing black. So, give me a sec. Yep, we were under scanning. I don't know why it defaults to under scan for all things. Let's go to 0% over scan. Which, of course, the projector has shifted in the two days since I've used it. Because I had this fully covering. And I may have to go fix this now. Yeah. Let's get the chair out. Alright, so here you see the 235 to 1 screen filled. The overshoot from the 16 by 9 projector is hitting the wall. And because it's so far away from the screen, when you are actually sitting in the right spot, which is like here, that space becomes much smaller. And obviously that becomes black when you uh, have a video playing. But you can see it's mirroring the image on the TV. So let's put on a movie. And of course that's going to freak out. Because why wouldn't it? Okay, so something like the Animatrix will start and you'll see it's shooting past. Let me mute this because God knows copyright infringements plague me. But I can simply shift four. Oh, wait. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now, that leaves a slight black top and bottom, and that changes per 235 to 1 image uh, video. Sometimes it fills fully, sometimes it leaves a slight uh, cha uh, black bar. Uh, it's not really worth crying over. I could zoom it in if I really wanted to get rid of that, but I won't. But yeah. Now, I went with the ivory over the white because I thought the ivory made everything look artificially blue. The TV. And obviously the TV would be shut off if I was watching something for real. But, uh, yeah. The sum total of the screen, cost-wise, was a roughly $750. The frame was probably the most expensive. Followed by the linear actuators, the controller for linear actuators, the brackets for linear actuators, uh, the switch, the controller, even that was $7. The pneumatic lifters were about $40. The felt tape, and if you want to count that, was like a $30 for the roll. I still have quite a large amount of it left. The screen material, the thank God for this 
Supreme Material because it is, in my opinion, superior to anything I've seen actual pro material. And twenty seven dollars? Twenty yeah, twenty seven dollars for three yards. It's a three yard section. I had to trim the ends off. So three yards of black, three yards of ivory. So you're looking at sixty dollars in screen material. The tubing around the outside uh, for I needed twenty four feet times I needed like forty five feet of that tubing. And that wasn't so bad. But uh maybe twenty five dollars. And uh yeah. Oh, I should have mentioned, it is mounted to a piece of 1x6 that is secured to the wall because there's no wood in this wall. It's a very thin space and then brick behind it. And I didn't want to just, this is a rental. Ta -da -da. This is a rental space. And I put 20 legs, 20 uh, wall mounts, 10 per 1x6 to actually attach all the hardware to because I didn't trust the wall to not just disintegrate with the weight of the screen and the torque of the screen. Let's see. Well, going to the next movie. I don't know what it is. It's got subtitles. Oh, it's a 16 by 9 movie, so here we go. If it's a 16 by 9 movie or TV show, you've got to zoom it out, move it down, and zoom it in. And I have to do this for Game of Thrones and House of Cards and Apocalypto. Now, at 104 inches, 235 to 1, it is still roughly, I think, 84 inches right here. So that's a pretty, actually, I've got a tape measure out and measure it. That's still a pretty massive amount of image that you're looking at. Certainly bigger than any television you'd want to put in a house. And really, I don't want to punish full screen movies by giving them black bars on top and bottom. I'd rather punish things like this and things like TV show. I want to punish them and say, look, you aren't in the right format. 235 to 1 is the right format. And since you're not in the right format, you have to get black bars. So that's just one way to go about it. That's the one little uh, dealy. Let's see, and if I want to change movies, I don't have a lot of them. They're all legally, completely legally bought and I have Blu-ray somewhere I'm sure. Let me see something before I go on. Make sure my output is Mad VR it is. Wally, by the way. Wally. Now Wally is a two three five to one so I get to zoom that back out. Bam. Wally leaves a much smaller black border. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Skin tones on the ivory just looked so much better. It took a, a bit of calibration on my end, adjusting uh, for the offset and the gain. There was a little bit too much green in my offset, but pulled it right out. Everything looks fantastic. I'm really impressed how the GoPro records it as well. So I'm probably going to take a few pictures. And I do get in the way of the projector from about 10 feet away because I am using the lens shift quite a bit. There's only about five or six inches it'll shoot below where I currently am. And you can see the camera mounted to my head. I should get some good pictures of this because this movie really shines. All right, so there it is. And I have the five part build series somewhere on YouTube. I could link those all in the description. Everything from brainstorming to I was going to hang it from the ceiling because I had this vent and then it was going to flip up to, oh, wait, I can come off the wall to maybe I could use aluminum to maybe I could use this material to let me try lifters to, you know, it, it's two hours plus. Easily two plus hours of just me BSing on camera. Let's try all this all over.